Tesco Jambu. How many people do they have to prepare the food for? Good morning, YouTube. This is Yan. I am on my longest way back home from Europe to China, and right now I am in Kuching in Malaysia. Today I'm going to have my last trip in Malaysia and perhaps the most remote one. I'm going to the far interior of Borneo and visit the Bantangai National Park, the Iban communities and their longhouse. Iban people is also known as the Sea Dayak. They are indigenous to Borneo Island. They are also the largest ethnic group in Sarawak, much more than the Malays and Chinese. Ibans are known uh, for their territorial migration and head hunting, which means they collecting the head of human beings and hang the skulls in their house. And secondly, they don't live in separate houses. Several families live together in a long house. They practice a communal living lifestyle. And thirdly, many of the long houses are in the Ranjan River area. They are very remote, not accessible by road. So the boat, long boat, is a main way of transport. And since it's not very accessible by public transport, I signed up for a group tour. Uh, it's a small group. I don't know who my teammates are, but I'm going to meet them in about half an hour. Before I leave, I still have two things to clarify. First of all, Iban people, they are not primitive people. Nowadays, most of the Ibans, they live in urban area just like us, and they mix with the Chinese and also the Malays. Only a very small amount still live in the jungles. And secondly, Iban is a big group. Within this big group, there are many small subgroups, and they live in different regions, they speak different dialects. So that's it. And this is my backpack for the coming three days. This is my car and my teammate. Good morning, I'm Good Edgar. Morning. Yeah? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yes. Hello. And this is Wright's family. We stopped here at a small chash, like a restaurant, and this is our lunch. We have some vegetables, fried fries, fried noodles, and this sour sweet chicken. After driving for two hours, we've reached the Batangai Lake. This lake is a big uh, hydroelectric lake, and from here we have to take a motorized long boat to cross the reservoir to the other side. Those are all our goods, our towers, our food, our life vest. We have to bring everything into the lodge. All our luggage are in the front. Finally, after one and a half hour beautiful boat ride on the lake, we have arrived on the other side. That's uh, the long house of the villagers. So let me show you our lodge first. This is our lodge and this is the dining area with some sleeping, sleeping chair. And here we also have a garden. This is a white ginger, that's papaya. There are a lot of fruit trees in Malaysia and if I walk a bit further down this wooden corridor 
that the house is the room for the guest but I live in a other room behind this house and I'm going to show you my room it's so I have a window that can be open like this and then since there are a lot of mosquitoes in the room I've got a mosquito net this is the jetty that we come from that's the Iban people, the local community. And here is their boat making factory. Those are the timber used for the for the boat. This must be the bottom area. The kids are having a lot of fun swimming in the river. And I am going to the long house because I want to show you their traditional dwellings. I'm walking towards the village. So at the entrance of the village you see this, this small tiny fruit. I don't know the name of it, but I've seen it in the market. In the market it's kind of pink and they can boil this fruit to eat it. And over there, there is something more. That's the chicken house. It's a coconut tree. And here it's a big jackfruit tree. There are so many jackfruits. And and as told by our guide, the jackfruit is the favorite fruit for the oranguta, the big monkeys that live in this forest. So not everyone is living in a longhouse. Because traditionally, they used to extend the longhouse. So sometimes the longhouse can be really long, but here there is a limited amount of space. When the family member grows, some of them move outside and build a separate house. This long house is a modern one. The old one was unfortunately burned down in 2014, so they built a new one. There is electricity, they also have Wi-Fi, and they have TVs, they also use YouTube, so it's a traditional form of architecture, yet a modern ways of living. There are certain restrictions, for example, the Wi-Fi signal is very weak, and there is no mobile phone signals here. There is no connection to the power plant. They are using the solar panels to generate electricity. So every house has a certain amount of uh, electricity they are allowed to use. And when they use that out, they will be running out of electricity. This is a communal space, public space. And those on this side, it's their rooms. So this is room number 20. And this means there are altogether 20 houses in this long house maybe around from 60 to 100 people the social structure of the long house is relatively simple so those are the rooms belong to different families yet they are all relatives they are bonded by the blood yesterday when i was here they were having a meeting in this communal space it's a communal space for gatherings for meetings women sitting there making handicraft men drinking together so unlike living in modern apartments, people who live in a longhouse have a very tight, very close relationship with each other. From the outside, you can also see men, they are preparing the rice for tomorrow. And some others, they are making the chickens. And the others, they are processing the herb. How many people do they have to prepare the food for? Uh, maybe uh, more or less uh, 15 people. 50? Yes. Wow. You see the girl inside, lady? Yeah. Maybe more than 20. No, they, they chop the chicken and then some of the... the you see the bamboo? They yeah. cook with the bamboo. This is a bamboo chicken? Yes, bamboo chicken. And inside they are making... A different job. They have a party tomorrow. A big party. Yeah. Does the party happen very often in the longhouse? Sometimes the family will come in. Yeah. yeah. We do it. Yeah, sometimes we have a silly break. Sometimes we do that like that. Do like, that. like when people get married? Yeah, or get married, yes. Have yes. kids? 
bagi dua yang kena tanya. When we was uh, celebrate the Christmas, Happy New Year. Yeah. Ah, so you celebrate both Christmas and the New Year? Yes, yes. Like the first of January, that New Year. Yes. So first of June. First of June. Yeah. What is that festival? The first of June is uh, our. Uh, what is called is uh, we call it a Gawai Daya. Gawai Daya. We just celebrate on. Uh, Sarawak. Uh, so it's not, like not, not, not on the peninsula of Malaysia. The Sarawak only, in the Borneo, especially on the Borneo. Mm. Are you also Christian? Yes. Uh. Most of our here is uh, Christian. And w where is the church? The church somewhere there. You see that the, the white. The building. white house. Yeah. yeah. The white house. That is the church. Yeah, yeah that, that is the church. Uh. How about your religion? Um, Buddhist? No, nothing. Atheist. Ah, okay. Like, most Chinese people don't have religious belief. Before, you always cook with this? Yes, before, yes. Glutinous rice, just trap the glutinous rice and mix up the some water. Yeah. Then we, put, we open it up and then we take the, the glutinous rice and then put on the the mat, yeah. the clean mat, yeah. and then we leave it around three hours sometimes, sometime, mm. um, until the, the glutinous rice is big cold, you know, not yeah. hot anymore. And then we mix with the the yeast, you know, the yeast. Yes. Yeah. That's how you make the wine. Yeah, the wine. Yes. Mm. The, the yeast is different to you. If you want to put more, yeah. the glutinous rice will be strong, you know. Yeah. If you don't want to put in more, it's enough for you. It's not strong. After three weeks, it's ready to drink. Yes, ready to drink. Mm -hmm. More strong. But if just a few weeks, yeah. I mean, uh, just one week or uh, five days, still sweet sometimes, you know? Yeah. Still not be strong. <laughs> yeah. Because sometimes the people, they don't like sweet. Yeah. They like strong. For me, it's better it's strong. <laughs> <laughs> just one time, you take finish. They are making two different kinds of food. Uh, one is the leaf with rice, the other is um, leaf with some flowers. Something like a rice cake. And what's the other thing they are making? They are making two kinds of one is with rice, and the other kind the is. The one is uh, they make from uh, tapioca. Ah, tapioca. Yeah, tapi tapioca, yes. And then they are going to steam it? Yes, yeah, steam it, yeah. Mm, like a... So like a uh, same way. Yeah? Uh, some of the Chinese make. Okay. Yeah. Like this uh, steamed tapioca cake. Yes, yes. Most of the food they consume is produced by themselves. They grow rice, they grow tapioca, and they hunt, they go fishing. Sometimes they hunt small animals. So it's more like a self-sufficient way of living. But anyway, uh, life in a longhouse is now advancing. Many of the kids, they are going to big cities like Kuching, Kuala Lumpur. And I uh, honestly have no idea how this kind of a traditional life will last. Iban, the Bidayo, Orang Ulu, those are the indigenous uh, tribes. What's the relation between Iban and Bidayo? The difference is the area or the, the territory where they live. And very obvious is the dialect. The dialect. We speak, we speak totally, completely different dialect. If I were to talk to them, they don't understand what I'm, what I'm talking. So what's this head hunting about? Because when they don't simply go and look for the skulls, yeah, it's because because they protect protect their their families. So if if other tribes trying to attack them, they will they kill, and they get the skulls and display it in the communal 
like in the long house in the communal area the more skulls they have the more safe is the long house because they meaning the they are more good warrior before we start hiking we need a lot of mosquito spray and Edgar he was worried about my sleeper but I told him it's all fine oh. Our hike starts from here, it's about a two hour hike to the waterfall and in this jungle we might see orangutan but we are not sure and we will find a lot of uh, different jungle fruits and trees. The, uh, it's a family of ginger. The more you, the regularly you take the, the young one like this, the more it grows. So this is what we what we what we use. Taste gingery. The taste fibrous. <laughs> <five or six. laughs> it's like coriander. Yes, that's yes, why I don't like coriander. Yeah. Oh, you don't like coriander. I knew it wasn't you? smelling nice. You were like, oh, that smells lovely. Mm. No, I no, think it's nice. Yeah, well, it's like true. Like smells like coriander. Ah, this yes. is the fruit. It's called jambu. jambu. The local local name, local word, jambu. This from that tree you Sorry. see there. But this is what the orangutan eat if, Love it. if there is off fruit season. It's called giant ant or elephant ant. It can be much bigger than this. Our guide Erika has learned all kinds of plants from his parents, grandparents. This knowledge has passed on from one generation to another and that's why he's so familiar with the jungle. I was really hoping that we can find a jackfruit in the jungle, but Edgar told me now it's not the season. And he said the season is starts from December. But why the fruit season starts in November, December? Now actually is the, the flowering in, in mid-year. Mid of the year is like a flowering uh, season before it's become a fruit. The Aragutta make a new nest every yeah. day. And here we saw an old nest made by Aragutan there on that big tree. Or they come back to the old uh, nest? There is a possibility, but when they reuse the nest, they have to repair. It's all about the food, the fruits. If there's a fruit tree around the old nest, they may use it. See another? nest of orangutan over there on the branch. Which grade is this one? It's like C. C. Which means it's like three, four months Two, old? three months old. How long does it take for orangutan to make a nest like that? While eating, yeah. they just fall on the, fall in the like twigs and branches, leaves. It's not really it's unlike bird's nest. It's just like a simple platform hmm. where they just sit there when they sleep. So I was wrong again. It's not a monkey. It's an ape. We are we are in category of human. Apes is the second, then the monkey. The very obvious differences: the monkey with the tail. You see, apes like chimpanzee, gorilla, bonobo without okay. tail. Apes don't jump from trees to another, yeah. but, they, the but they swing. Monkeys, they jump because of their tail to balance themselves when they jump from tree to another. Orangutan and eat them. And they are very smart and strong enough to deal with the spike or with the yeah. thorn. Wow. wow, it's a very spiky, yes. spiky plant. So therefore, we eat it as well as vegetables. What, the stems? Yeah, the, the, the heart. Uh -huh. The young yeah. heart in the middle. Yeah. Say go. Say go. Say go. And all those are the big trees they used to make the long boat. After cutting it, we have to bring it all the way back to the village. That's really hard work. We also found a lot of mushrooms, but I don't think they're edible. Look. There are so many of them, and most of the mushrooms come out during the raining season. Alice, or the castle for the for the ant queen. So this oh. is the ant nest. Oh. 
and you look at the the highway to get to the end they also cover them so oh. this thing actually is hollow ah. yeah? very ugly outside but there's a thousands of uh, tunnel just so like tunnel in inside yeah this is another active ant house look at the size looks like a big coconut who created that thing yeah. like the gateway to their their nest underneath oh. in, in, in here yeah. Yeah. so they have their nest inside the yes. tree so that's their gateway to get them they built that one yes. wow looks like it's a for branch protection. it's for protection it's like See? so this kind of bee is called stingless bee it doesn't sting Am I and it's produced the best quality of honey wow. which is used by the specialist for for medicine there is a jar here and it's a tombstone of the dead people when people dead the indigenous people bury them in this area we've reached the river again and we're going to take the boat Put your side feet like this we're going up a stream to the waterfall and now we're going to make lunch. They've also collected, for example, you can see there's bamboos because this afternoon we're going to make bamboo chicken. and peaceful and at the end of the river there is a waterfall I don't know if I can get there because I don't know how to swim but I'm trying to move a bit closer the water is very refreshing and along the two sides of the rivers there are a lot of fruit trees although now it's not really the fruit season but the orangutans they often come to this area to look for food and while I was on a boat I saw a lot of the nest, the old nest made by the orangutans. This afternoon we are going to experience the jungle ways of cooking. We have the bamboos and he's putting beans into the bamboos. In the other bamboo they are going to put the chickens. Chickens with ginger and some herbs that we've just gathered along the way. And for the smaller bamboos, what are rice. we going That's for the rice. For the sticky rice. Ah. And now since they are pouring the chicken out of the bamboos, it smells so good. It smells so good. It's the bamboo. Mm. Once like you go to the summer. Mm. 
After two hours long walk, everyone is hungry, but our food looks so wonderful. The food is like taking up there. Up. So some moving branches, so that might be the orangutan. Now we're trying to look for it. Sounds kissing, like <coughs> meaning she's getting she started to get angry, and it's also a sign to get us okay. away from from the from this is something like their, their place or their territory. Yeah. They will break the branch. Right. As I told you before, this is also my last trip in Malaysia. I hope next time when I come back, I can make some Malaysian friends and go for more adventurous trips, such as uh, jungle fruit hunting. And in four days, I will go to Hong Kong. And from there, I'm going back. I'm really, really looking forward to go back home. So yeah, that's the end of today's video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.